Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. Now for a long time I have been trying to get my hands on Raspberry Pi 5 to test out its abilities and capabilities. And this time I got my hands on one. So today I will be doing an unboxing video of the Raspberry Pi 5 8 GB model. Make sure to watch the whole video till the end. Now Raspberry Pi 5 comes in a red box and the box can be opened from the side. The Raspberry Pi 5 is simply just put there inside the box without much protection. I guess protection is not needed after all. The board is quite sturdy and has a bright green color to it. Now keeping the Raspberry Pi aside, we can see here are some do's and don'ts that we must follow while handling the Raspberry Pi. We also get a user manual that has a lot of pages written in different languages but we don't need that at all. We know the basics. Now getting the board on hand, it's fascinating how such a nucleated board can be created. It's very delicate and there are many tiny SMD components that are set up on the PCB. This board contains a lot of power and is 1.5 to 3 times faster than its predecessor, the Raspberry Pi 4. In the back, here is the SD card holder and other SMD components which I think we shouldn't mess up. Now coming to the active cooler that I have bought with the Raspberry Pi. The box looks very tiny. The heatsink is quite flat but it contains some heat pads for getting in touch with the ICs and the main processor unit of Raspberry Pi 5. You should know that Raspberry Pi 5 uses BCM2712 chipset. It's an ARM based chip and has 4 A76 cores as its base. Its base clock is set at 2.4 GHz, however you can overclock it up to 3 GHz given that you use Raspberry Pi's very own 27 Watt 5V 5A power supply. Otherwise the voltage would get low and you will get a notification that the voltage to the main chip is very low and the Raspberry Pi will shut itself down. I have faced it a lot of time. Therefore, I don't suggest you to overclock beyond 2.5 to 2.6 GHz if you are using any mobile charger. This is solely because 5.5 Ampere is not a standard in power delivery charging. Compared to Raspberry Pi 4, the Raspberry Pi 5 already contains a 4 pin fan header. Now I have plugged in the active cooler. The improvements on Raspberry Pi 5 include a new PCIe Gen 2 slot, two display and camera adapters and an improved SD card slot which can receive higher read and write speeds as compared to Raspberry Pi 4. Everything is snugly fit and the boards looks very cool. This is my first time getting my hands on a Raspberry Pi. I have not ever used any Raspberry Pi 4, 3 and neither did I have a Pi Zero or Pi Pico. Now for booting up the Pi, I will be using a 128GB SanDisk Ultra Class A1 SD card which has reach speeds up to 140 Mbps. Otherwise your Raspberry Pi might feel very sluggish. Let's now focus on the part on how to install Ubuntu on Raspberry Pi 5. We first have to download Raspberry Pi Imager from the official website. After opening the website, you can scroll down a bit and you will see the download links for the respective operating systems. You have to download as per your needs. Here I am using Windows 11, that's why I selected download for Windows. After downloading, you have to open the file and click on install. I already have Raspberry Pi image installed, that's why I am not installing it. After opening Raspberry Pi image, you have to choose the device as Raspberry Pi 5. After that, I will choose Ubuntu LTS24 as I use that OS very much and I know the nooks and cracks of it. Here are three available options Ubuntu Desktop, Ubuntu Server and Ubuntu Desktop LTS. Now in the devices section, I have to connect a SD card to my PC. I will plug in the SD card into SD card reader and then plug that SD card reader on my front IO. After plugging in, 
I can choose the storage. I select the storage and then click on next. And if I click yes, the SD card will be formatted and the OS will be flashed. I have already flashed the OS beforehand and now I will plug in the SD card. If you are wondering what the white base on the Raspberry Pi 5 is, it's a handmade base that I made for the Raspberry Pi to save the delicate circuitry from being damaged. Now I will connect the HDMI. Note that Raspberry Pi 5 uses a mini HDMI, so you have to find a proper cable. I will connect the USB of the mouse and keyboard as well. After that, you need to choose a specified charger, minimum 15 watts. Because you need to provide Raspberry Pi 5 with at least 5 volt with 3 amperes. After I have connected, I am finally booting up into Ubuntu. The first boot might feel slow. After booting, I will test its video capabilities because that's what the Raspberry Pi 3, the 4 and other previous generations support. I have opened YouTube in Chromium because Firefox is not at all optimized for ARM. Let us use this video as a sample. As we can see, the video loads pretty quickly. Currently the video is running at 1080p and it's quite smooth. YouTube is feeling smooth as well, there are very minimal frame drops. I will now open the system monitor and check how much processing power it's taking for it to render at 1080p so smoothly. As we can see, the CPU currently sits at approximately 50%. We can get the CPU usage to as low as 30% if you use the H.264 Fi extension for Chrome. My final verdict on the Raspberry Pi 5 is that it's very capable as per its size, but it's quite overpriced in our country. I got it for 7800 rupees, including GST and uh, I can actually get a whole PC at this amount. So I guess it's not worth it as a single PC but if you are looking it for hobby purposes, for experimenting and to tinker the boat a bit then it's quite feasible for you. Thanks for watching, signing out.